Hello my friends, welcome to another edition of Stick Time. Unfortunately, Logan Connick cannot be with us today. He is taking a nap. I am Patrick Henkels here with Brett Marison. And Brett, what's going on in the world of college hockey? We got number one, a small school in Hampton, Connecticut known as Quinnipiac University. De that school is dedicated to their hockey program. They are now 19-1-3. One loss on the year and 19 wins. They, therefore, are the number one team of the nation. We got number two, University of North Dakota. Number three, Providence College. Number four, Boston College. Number five, St. Cloud State. And number six, University of Michigan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michigan Wolverines. Go blue. Number seven, University of Nebraska at Omaha. Number eight, University of Massachusetts at Lowell. Number nine, Harvard. And number ten, another Ivy League in the Cornell Big Red. Wow. You know, those are some really great teams that are just named off there. I remember actually going to Cornell with Logan for a hockey camp. You know, they got a great program down there. A lot of great alumni, a lot of great players. Yeah, really awesome a lot stuff. of NHLers coming out, actually, at this point. Yes. Um, and now we'll go straight to the NHL. Today we're going to be talking to you about the games of the weekend, starting with Friday night. Probably one of the biggest games of the weekend that tonight at 7.30 p.m. at the BB&T Center in Sunrise, Florida. We got the Florida Panthers, who have been red hot, but have unfortunately lost three straight games but have gained a lot of points on the road trip. They're now back home for, a, for a, what I believe is a five-game homestand, back-to-back -back nights, tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks and tonight against the Tampa, and tomorrow night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Patrick, what are our predictions for this game? Well, I think that we're going to have a really close, tight game here. Both of these teams are, are very good. you you got the Florida Panthers, who, are red, who, like you said, are red hot. Of course, they dropped the last few games, but they're gonna they're gonna have a Can't lot more. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have a lot of motivation to try and win this game against a really good Chicago Blackhawks team with players like Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane and Corey Crawford in between the pipes. You know, it's gonna be a great game, I think. Yeah, and also for the Florida Panthers, a very big upside for today. Uh, star soft, star sec, second year defenseman Aaron Ekblad, who was last year's Calder Trophy winner, the Rookie of the Year, will be making his return tonight after being knocked out for a few games against the Edmonton Oilers from an illegal behind-the-back check that was not called by the referee. So Aaron Ekblad coming back tonight, that should provide a little bit of a spark for the Panthers. However, even though he's coming back, and so was Eric Branson, another solid young defenseman, they have unfortunately ruled out Captain Willie Mitchell, another good defenseman for tonight's game. Mm -hmm. But what do we think is going to happen with that Panther defense now? You have Ekblad and Branson back. Unfortunately, your big leader is out. What's going to happen now? Can't tell you. I, 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 I can't tell you. I think this game is. I think this game is honestly a toss-up. But even, yeah. I'm not trying to be biased because I am a big Florida Panther fan. But I no. think I'm going to have to go with the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers have been playing. They've been giving some of the. They beat the Montreal Canadiens, who at the time were one of the best teams in the league, three to one. Now, now, now they're uh, a bit of a slump, correct? The Canadians. Yeah, but at the time, the Canadians were not in the slump, and yeah. they beat them three to one. The Panthers have been playing really well as of late. The past mm -hmm. three games, not so much. But you know, it was a long road trip through Canada. They got tired when they came back to Tampa. But now that they're at home with a fan base that has actually started filling up the arena because of how good the Panthers have been doing, I think this is going to be a really great atmosphere and a really great game. I agree. You know, you got two really solid teams. It's going to be a big game for both of them. Roberto and... Luongo will be starting, by the way, for the for the Florida Panthers, and then the night after will be Al Montoya. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think it's going to be a really good game. Yeah, Luongo has to keep his head up because I know he's had a few games where he's let in a few bad goals mm -hmm. and it's cost the Panthers some games. But, you know, you can't be so consistent. It's really hard to be that consistent of a goaltender when you're, I mean, when you're his age, especially at 36 years of age. So let's see what he does tonight. Also, another big game we have tonight, we have the Anaheim Ducks who are finally starting the pieces together and the best team in the league as of right now, the Washington Capitals. Oh, the Washington Capitals are a red-hot organization. You know, you got uh, Alexander Ovechkin leading the pack. You know, he's just such an awesome hockey player. He's got great speed. Nick Backstrom yeah. along to go with them. Nick, Nick, Nick Backstrom, TJ Oshie, all these great players. Just complimentary pieces I know. in this entire organization. You really, and they have that balance on their team that really produces a winning record. They really are a great team this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to take the Capitals for that one just because the Capitals have been playing unbelievably well. I know the Ducks are starting to piece it together, but Capitals are at home at the Verizon Center in D.C. I don't see them losing this game. Mm. I really don't see them. And let's talk about two of our local teams are in action tonight. we got the New York Rangers at Carolina against the Hurricanes and the New York Islanders in Ottawa against the Senators. Uh, what do we think is going to happen with these two teams? I think the Rangers are easily going to pull this one out. Well, you never know what can really happen. The Rangers are uh, trying to get out of their little eighth place slump. I mean, they were doing very well at the beginning of the season, but now they really have to, you know, settle down and focus, I think, at this part of the season. Because, you know, the playoffs are coming up. 
even though it's January, the playoffs are coming out. There's there's always that. Right after that All Star break, which yeah. is going to be in a few weeks, yeah. which is going to be next week, I believe, or the week after, is when people really start focusing on that playoff race. So that just marks the halfway point. We yeah. are almost halfway through the season. You got to start locking your points in. Mm -hmm. You really got to start locking your points in. And now the Rangers have really a chance to do it tonight against the Carolina Hurricanes. I think they do. I think that they're gonna. I think this is going to be. Not really a cakewalk, but I think the Rangers are going to take this one just because the Hurricanes have not been playing well as of late, and the Rangers have so far regained momentum with two very big wins, one over the rival Philadelphia Flyers. So I think that this one's going to be a, a good one for the Rangers. And the second game we got for that, the New York Islanders, the recently moved to Brooklyn New York Islanders, I should say, oh, yeah. um, against the Ottawa Senators. The Senators have really been, they've been a very competitive team. The past few years, they've been one of those teams that always competes and somehow always scoots into the first round of the playoffs. But for some reason, they can never dominate. But it, at home, they play pretty well. What do you think is going to happen with the Islanders in this one, Pat? The Islanders. Well, the Islanders are a team that's is a team that's really. Um, they're but they're actually pretty good this year. Yeah, they they they're, they're really good this year, and they're trying and they're trying to win back that fan base. You know, after so many years of mediocrity in the league, and John Tra John Traveris came in and he got players like Kyle Ocaposo, you know, coming in and. They made the pl they made the playoffs yeah. one year in Long Island, I believe, yeah. a few years ago, and then they made they didn't make it the next year. And the year after that, they made it to the second round, right? And lost, uh, but I mean that's okay. I mean you can't you can't yeah. go that far. It's really hard, especially when you've been so mediocre. Now they're now they're in Brooklyn. Fan base really has not really shown up because the yeah. Barclays Center not the greatest hockey arena. But what do we think is going to happen with this for the Islanders? Well, it really comes down to how much how much they want and how much work they're willing to put in to get this win. You know, yeah, trying to win back. Back your fan base and your um, your legacy is a, is a is a very hard thing to do. I mean, you gotta remember, this is a team, the New York Islanders. They won four straight Stanley Cups starting in 1980. And the Dennis Potvin era. <laughs> the, yeah, the Denny Potvin era. But not just Denny Potvin. You got players like Brian Trotche, Mike Bossy, Butch Goring, uh, Bob Nystrom, Clark Gillies, Chico Bill, Resch. Yeah, Chico, Chico Resch. No, Billy Smith. Billy yeah. Smith between the pipes. Yeah, you know, got got all these great great players. Uh, and then after that all dissolved, it, it, it was really hard for the Islanders, I think, to really repeat that same legacy again. But I think now that they got players like uh, Tavares and Ocaposo, they can really um, rebuild that, I believe. Awesome. I believe the Islanders are actually going to take this one as well. I don't see them losing to the Senators. The Senators are, have been kind of up and down lately. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to be in this game. Plus, I believe they also, yeah, they played last night in New Jersey, so the back-to-back -back road trip coming home, they probably got home very late last yeah. night. They're probably not going to be as energized as they need to be. Right. And the last local game we'll talk about is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in Winnipeg. The Devils take on the Jets. The Devils actually are tied, I believe, for the last playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Mm. So... My, the whole thing is that wild card race. That wild card race is the so kind of up and down teams in the East that sort of can be there, but at the same time don't really deserve it. What do we think about the Devils in this one really fighting to stay in that playoff hunt? Well, you know, come, come playoff, come when come crunch time. Come come, come crunch. Yeah, come, <laughs> that's such a weird come crunch time. It's gonna be um, it, it's it's really up to the players. You know, they really gotta strap, strap down and go in and work hard because you know the Devils have. Been struggling for a while now. Ever since you know, players like uh, Zach Parise left and Marty Brodeur retired, and Ilya Kovalchuk left the league. You know, it's just um, now they're, they're kind of in the same position that the Islanders were in. Now they really got to rebuild their legacy and try to you know keep up their st stamina as a, as an organization. And they can do it tonight. Do it tomorrow. Sorry, by um, beating the Jets. Yeah, we know New Jersey is a very fickle fan base where if you don't yeah. win, no one shows up to your game. Yeah. That's, I guess you could say that about the entire tri-state area besides the New York Rangers. It's, it's like the, when the Islanders weren't good, no one would really go. Mm -hmm. The Islanders became good, now they're packing the house. Yeah. Um, the Devils, I mean, they're, they've been eh. In the last Devils game mm -hmm. I was at, there really was not that big of a crowd. I mean, mm -hmm. if the Devils can keep up the consistency of being good, they're going to win that fan base back and gain that momentum right. that they need. I don't know about this game against the Jets, though. The Jets play very well in Winnipeg mm -hmm. with a very amazing Winnipeg fan base that, yeah. does, that does not go a single game without selling out that, that awesome arena. I know. Uh, so the last thing I want to talk to you, Brett, about on this uh, episode of Sick Time, what's up with uh, Gary Bettman thinking about creating this North American team I have no to, play idea. Against the, to play against USA and Canada? How does that make any sense at all? I don't understand what, is, what, the, what the situation was that Team Latvia dropped out of the World Cup of Hockey. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really remember the exact reason, probably something with their players. But Gary Bettman decides not, 
the IWF decides to tell the international hockey organizations that are running this whole entire thing, right. suggest them to make a team can team Canada and USA, which are always happening, yeah. but to make a team North America to go with it to fill in the spot of Latvia. And that, at that point, I feel like you should ask a country yeah. that has never been in it just to kind of give that country something to cheer about. Right. Like we got, we got some teams that just joined the International Ice Hockey Federation, the IIHF. We got Jamaica has just joined the IIHF, the first Caribbean island to have a men's national hockey team. Mm -hmm. Maybe give them a shot. Japan has a men's national hockey team. I, come on, Mexico's got a national team. Israel's got a national team. You got to give somebody a shot. You can't just make a team of an entire continent, especially when everyone's going to want to play for their respective country. I know it really does not make any sense to me. Um, but it looks like at this point we really got we really got to wrap it up. So you know, ho hopefully Logan will be able to join us on the next edition. Once again, this is Patrick Hankels and Brent Marison signing out. All right, see you. Have a good one.